full value out of that. Give me all the value. Artifact, enchantment, player. Please and thank you. Oh, that's a that's a baller card right there. That is a real good card. At its full potential. You absolutely love to see it. Oh, baby. What is up, everyone? Justin Parnell back again with more Historic Brawl with Phyrexia All Will Be One. New commanders, and we have the Eternal Wanderer today. We are playing a mono-white control deck with the Eternal Wanderer. And uh, there's not really... I mean, there's a couple other ways I suppose you could play it. But all the things on this card really just suggest a control. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each combat. Exile up to one target creature or artifact returns the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of their end step and for each player choose a creature that player controls and everyone else sacrifices the rest of the creatures not chosen so we are going hard we're going to try to do as much ramping as we can in mono white which you know you know various uh levels of realistic this with that but we're going to try to do that land a couple of large lifelink creatures like lyra dawnbringer uh, Bane Slayer Angel, maybe a Worm Coil Engine, and we have some sweet little tech with a bunch of Gideons, even Gideon the Oath Swarm, and uh, let's see, we got a couple of three mana Gideons that are a little bit better, Gideon Blackblade, Gideon of the Trials, that way when we make it go down to one creature, we can say, oops, guess what, we have a Gideon in addition to our one creature, and maybe we have a land that turns into a creature as well, we have a bunch of those, so we're going to try to control the game run our opponent out of stuff, and then finish them off with a single creature, a planeswalker, and a land. Let's go. But before we get into the games, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to keep seeing this sweet, sweet content every week. On the play against uh, Brunor Battlehammer, and we have three lands, um, and Restoration of a Ganjo, which is like a little ramp, little land, little... A little bit of everything. Record or bank buster draw some extra cards in Solemnity. Well, what can we be using this for? Certainly not nefarious purposes. Okay, all right. Our punch trying to get frisky, clearly. You know, let's just do this thematic compass. Wait, if we miss a land drop, because we're going to discard a land and then get the land, return the land back. Our opponent is, uh, I believe the term is going hard. The good news is we are going to be able to mount some sort of defense and then play the Eternal Wanderer here. Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. Uh, yeah, let's, let's discard this. Return the planes tapped. Let's go ahead and play Lauren. Let's put a stop to that. And uh, we'll play Amiria's Call Tapped. And if we can throw up a block here with Lauren, then we will do so. No question about it. I'd love to have the chance to throw up a block with Lauren. That's please. Pretty, pretty please. Okay, their commander could come down, but it would just be a 5-4. Just a 5-4 for 4. Selfless Savior. Okay, so they're saying we're going to trade Selfless Savior for Dwarf. Dwarf Hold Champion. No, just one here? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Planes, let's go ahead and get down our... Eternal Wanderer. And they don't... It doesn't appear they have flying. We don't have any tokens that we want to get rid of from them, so we're just going to try to gum up the ground for now. And because we have this Reckoner Bankbuster... Ooh. Rebel Salvo. Okay. 
I was gonna say, we, we're, we're not gonna let them draw cards. I think that we can win the card advantage race. And it looks like our opponent agrees in some form or fashion. On the draw against a Johnny Sleepy Agent. Uh, well, we have a Loyal Warhounds on the draw. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it. We are going to keep. And let's play this uh, Mutavault here. Ah, third land. Okay. Well, the good news is, now we can attack with this Mutavault. Because we can just play, like I can play this uh, Faceless Haven. I can't attack with the Mutant Vault. Either way, we're just going to play this. What am I thinking? This comes in and play tapped. It's a white card. I think I'm thinking of Knight of the White Orchid. Look at all these lands we have. Six, six lands. You love to see it. A Johnny Sleepy Agent. He's so sleepy. Okay. Went to go look for a creature of Planeswalker. Okay. Well, Containment Priest is a great combo with uh, the Wanderer. Let's, uh... Let's attack here. Let's try to attack a Johnny. Yep, think block that. No problem. Will be We're gonna play uh, Containment Priest on their turn. If they find a creature, we have put it on the bottom. If they find a creature, we can play Eternal Wanderer and then it will be gone. They did not, they found a Planeswalker. That's fine. This can make a token. Make a rhino. Okay. I brought some muscle along. Surprise. Alright. Eternal Wanderer. I would like to exile this. You can go down to one. Let me make one more. Shenanigans, because this this is a shenanigans having card, you know? Is only beginning. I got two creatures. Garrick's Harbinger and Werewolf Pack Leader. And then they reveal a land yet again. So this gives poison counters. Oh, that's bad news. Don't fight Containment Priest. Hmm. Okay. So, we're going to Realm Cloak Giant. It's a really, really dirty hand. We're going to take out Vivian. And then we are going to make a double striking creature. Hopefully... Hopefully. Hey, they found Redain, which is bad for us. We have a lot of Snowlands. Don't do that. There's Redain. And Beanstalk Giant, and then they can play Werewolf Pack Leader. Okay. I think we can, um... We can do something about this. We should be able to activate both of these and then attack a Johnny. And we're going to exile Redain. No, we're going to exile the Werewolf Pack Leader. Yeah. I'll handle this one. Okay. 
I think I might be playing this and getting a land instead, actually. But Johnny's not going to die. But I don't really want to give up my... Uh, I don't want to I don't want to give up a land. Okay, let's go get a planes, put it on the battlefield. Okay. So slowly, slowly working it out. Slowly but surely. All right, go looking. They found a Ashaya Soul of the Wilds. Okay. And a Garrick's Harbinger. You got it. This is back. I think we might be doing a little farewell here. And then we'll attack a Johnny. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, let's get... Let's just get everything because it doesn't get Planeswalkers. You don't, you don't want anything crazy to happen. All right. Get in there. And then we will make a samurai. An opponent says, I'm green white and I can't deal with deal with your planeswalker, and that's understandable. Sometimes you gotta grind them out. On the draw against our old friend, attracts a grand unifier. Well, we'll keep this. We got three lands, a bunch of ramp, and a bit of card draw. Basically, all we could want. We know Atraxa is not going to be winning quickly. Uh, secluded step, actually. This this might be able to turn into a couple of angel warrior tokens. Cold Steel Heart, let me guess. Green. Blue. Okay. Respectable. Blue's better than green. We're gonna play the ramp the ramp off. Who can ramp harder? Ooh, they're ramping pretty good. That's some pretty good ramping. Are you done ramping? Curse of Silence on the Wandering Emperor. Okay. Yep. The Eternal Wanter. Oh, not the Wandering Emperor. That's a different one. Although that's in this deck too. All right. We're still ramping. Good news, we didn't actually want to play the Eternal Wanderer on uh, the next turn. We wanted to continue to ramp and then draw some cards. So that's what we're going to do. Inquisition of Kozilek, we're not going to do that. They're going to take that Reckon or Bank Buster for sure. Ooh, the Invocation is nice. That is a nice one. We're going to do that during their upkeep. Full value out of that. Give me all the value. Artifact, enchantment, player. Please and thank you. Oh, that's a that's a baller card right there. That is a real good card. At its full potential. You absolutely love to see it. Oh, baby. Oh, they even have a land? Well, this Gift of Estates isn't very good, but you know what? I think that we will be okay with that. All right. Oh, baby. This is... This is looking... Good. We're going to be beat down with our, uh, our, our, meager, our meager crew of tiny creatures. Yes! Oh, that's how you can lose with the tracks, uh.
<laughs> Only four mana. We are on the play against Jadar. All right. This is um, a slow hand. I actually think I'm going to mulligan this. Our cards are too expensive. Uh, obviously, we're going to mulligan this too. So we'll go to six. Treasure map. Retrofitter foundry. I'm going to go to five. All right. We'll keep this. Angel of the Dire Hour, you're gone. And AO, you're gone. And that's that's gonna be tough. Uh, blessed with an elk. There's Jadar. Okay, so we're just gonna ex we're gonna exile Jadar because I think that this is, uh, I think this is the this is the path for us to be able to. Like, dig out of, of this hole. Okay. That's actually not bad, because maybe it, it will encourage them to deploy more creatures. Alright. We have drawn lands. Five, is to me, is always like an acceptable mulligan. Like... Going to five is totally fine. I'll go to six in like a snap second. And I'll go to five like pretty quickly, to be honest. Okay. So we're going to block and then sack. And hopefully they play out more stuff. Morbid opportunist. That's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. Plague Crafter. Okay, well. Looks like we will not be blocking. Get a couple of these. And there goes the zombie. And then we're gonna take, uh, gonna take three. We didn't have anything to sack, so we had to discard a card, which is fine. It's mobile. Which is cauldron. All right. Well, we're most certainly gonna give them a card on our turn. Man, so close. One, two, three, four, five, six. So close. All right. Doom Scar it is. They're going to draw a card. We're going to lose two. Now we're going to hit them for four. Okay. We cleaned up the board, which is good. A lot of cards in their hand, though. This is where we're feeling that mulligan. Hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, it's going to pressure our left throw a lot. All right. Let's play this. This is going to be uh, not just a chump blocker, but it can actually trade with Shieldred. Obviously, it's not exactly what we want, but it might be the best that we got. Very well could be the best that we got. So, there's Jadar. Okay, that's good. That's good. That means they don't have, they don't have much meaningful. 
I mean, the bad news is we're going to go to six on our turn. Grandmaster of Flowers. Tart creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance. Can't block. Can't attack or block. Uh, we need double white. Wait. One. Can we do both of these? Two, three, four. Four, five. No, we're still, we'd, we'd be short. Okay. Grandmaster of Flowers. Okay. You cannot... Attack or block. Take a moment to consider your actions. And we'll just get in. Chip away. Alright, we're gonna go to four on our turn. Technically three. If they attack with Jadar, and if they play creatures could be two. Okay. Probably, uh, okay. They're gaining a life. Each player who doesn't. Yeah, we will sacrifice, we will sacrifice this. And we will go looking. Okay. Total mana four or less. I guess we're going to get a Gideon of the Trials and a Retrofitter Foundry. All right. Shame we couldn't get multiple Gideons, but... Okay, so... Let's do this. We're going to exile Shildred. We're going to say... Braids can't attack. And we're going to say... As long as we control a Gideon, we can't lose. All right. Can we turtle up from this position? This would be this would be the turtle of all turtlings. Yeah, we'll put it back in the command zone. So this can't attack. Jadar can. Okay. No, 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 no! You're st I should have priority when that trigger goes on the stack. It just, it just went right past it. <sighs> well, well, now we're just now we're just dead. Well, now we're just dead. Okay, all right. Now we're we're dead. Good game. We at least should have had a chance. We can we can play this. Uh. Then Shieldra tries to come back. It can't. They sacrifice this, we can sacrifice this, and then we go to one. Like, it's not good, but we're not dead. Not, you know, we're still probably, we're, we're probably dead. Probably still dead. On the play against Angrath, the flame chained with a bunch of ramp. Well, that's what we want. That is absolutely what we want. Uh, probably gonna lose this approach the second approach of the second sun against Angrath. No way we get to deploy that before it's discarded from our hand. Which is a shame. Cause Alright. Choose your ramp piece that we don't have. 
Because I was going to say, this is a really good way to win. They just can't do anything about it if we can cast it. They just got to kill us in time. I only have two lands. Well, now I got a second land. Or third land. Now, I am going to play it because I can play this Wandering Emperor, but that's not the point. At some point, I'm going to play this Loyal Warhound. They have their own cult steel heart. Isn't that horrible? Red. Okay. All right. We have another land. Go ahead. Man, Wandering Emperor. This is a heck of a card. A heck of a card. So, we really just want to keep this low because any damage spell they have can kill it. So, we don't want to, like, try to build it up to do, like, two minus twos in a row. You know what I mean? So, we're going to make a thing. We're going to make a thing on our turn. And we'll probably do that for a little while. Uh, I will likely play this as a land untapped so I can make a 1-1. One -one. So that's very likely to happen. All right. Wandering Emperor. Make a samurai. Make a samurai. We will pay three. And we will attack for two. All right. We have Sune's Intervention, which is a card that I love. Quite, it's quite good. And when we make our little citizen here, or human, not a citizen, a human, uh, it's probably going to get this counter. Ooh, Liliana Dreadhorde General. That's a good one. Sacrifice two creatures? That is ideal. Exactly what I wanted you to do. Because now, Liliana is going to go down. She's down for the count. All right, going to pass the turn. Tempting to cleansing Nova and kill these. It's a very, very tempting. All right, there's Angrath. We're going to go up. Going to get rid of this Cleansing Nova. Well, we're going down, huh? That's interesting. I try to take care of the Wandering Emperor. Okay. Maybe they have a removal spell. For my human, they do not. Okay. All right. well, we're going to keep our Wandering Emperor. We could trade Planeswalkers, but theirs is their commander. They can just get it back. Ours is not. Discard a card. Cleansing Nova will be it. That gets sacrificed. Okay, so first thing. They have five lands. Right on. Loyal Warhound. Let's make another thing. They're going to make us discard a card. Um, I really want both of these cards. So, we're going to hold this uh, Foundry and discard that. We still don't know what they got with Key to the Archive. It means that something bad, like a Time Warp. Or a Day of Judgment. That wouldn't be bad. No fire, no steel. No fire, no steel. Okay. What do we got here? I, I feel like it's time. Maybe you're going to pay three and draw a card. I don't know. Our opponent's definitely got some options. Hmm. All right. 
right, we'll block. There's some sort of trick going on. Maybe it is a, maybe it is a day judgment. It was. Okay. Stand corrected. I stand corrected. Okay. They can get rid of the intervention. Alright, so I think what we want to do... Let's go ahead and do this. Alright. We can, we, we can discard this Duelist's Heritage. That's fine. And then we're going to approach next turn. Almost iced him out if they waited another turn because we could have killed this. Right, Duelist's Heritage is going to go. Liliana, all right, there goes the approach. Yeah. Ruining your day is going to be Feed the swarm. Yep, approach goes. Of course, of course. Okay. I'm gonna put a counter here. Uh, eternal wanderer. Double wanderers. This is going to take out Angra. Doomscar is going to bite the dust. Angrath will come back, going to steal one of our friends. It's just, it's just an inevitability. And they could team up. They could kill kill it with Ileana, and they could kill uh, one of our planeswalkers. Well, they could kill the Wandering Emperor anyway. All depends on what they want to do. They can kind of have it either way. Three damage or four damage. They should take the double strike one. Okay. Opting not to do that. I guess if they're killing the Wandering Emperor, it doesn't—it doesn't really matter. Let's get sacrificed. Okay, Cave of the Frost Dragon—that's a good one. And this is going to be foretold, and then we will make another samurai, and we're going to be able to make a token on our end step. This Cave of the Frost Dragon is going to take out this Liliana, and it is very likely there's nothing they can do about it. Ooh, interesting. So they're drawing before they're plussing Liliana. That could be that could be a mistake. That could be a, that could actually be a, a, a critical mistake here. No fire. No steam. Right, we're going to 19. We've kept our life total pretty high. And now they gotta discard. Discard a mountain. Unnecessarily discarded a mountain. All right. So, cave. Uh, this is going to go here. This is going to go at them because we don't want. We actually don't want Angrath to come back. Uh, Angrath can keep hitting us for two and making us discard. We don't have any cards in our hand, so... I am I am totally fine with that exchange. And they can keep drawing with Castle Lockwain, but until they have, like, a, a also a token maker, then... I mean, this is, this is an uphill battle for them. Chandra's, Chandra's good, but... Uh, these have these are double striking tokens. It's so much pressure. Davriel, okay. I mean that's that's more damage. We got to deal with it. So we're gonna go to twelve. Ooh, don't have a card in our hand. Soul Parishion, okay. So, 
cave. All right, let's go ahead and uh, attack. So, this plus this is going to take out Chandra. This is going to hit Angrath. This is going to take out Tavriel. We're wasting a bit of damage, to be honest. We just want... I want Angrath to stick around. So Exile's a non-land permanent, and they can pay two more to play it. Well, we'll just wait, and we'll, you know, we'll hit Cold Steel Heart if we have to discard it. All right. Cold Steel Heart. It's going to cost them four to play. And, it's, you know, we're at ten. But we do have... This is 7, 10 damage. They drew two Planeswalkers last turn. I have to imagine they're not going to be drawing two Planeswalkers every turn from here on out. Celestis, that can gain them a little bit of life. Filter through some cards. Can't play Cold Steel Heart back out now. Well, they could be getting hit for a, a chunk of damage. Oh, we have way more than 10. Way more than 10, actually. You... Uh, is this, is this lethal? Yeah, this is lethal. Lethal. Yep. Alright. Yeah, I forgot. The, I just didn't count double strike on those, which is important. Grind them out. Grind them out. We are on the play against the Scarab God. And we're going to keep... We have a Relic of Progenitus, which is going to... To say that it's going to inconvenience the Scarab God would be an understatement. Uh, we can play Guardian Idol on two. Cosmo Elixir on three. Overall, I'm feeling great. This is like an ideal hand against the Scarab. But we're going to have a Swords to Plowshares. We want to get crazy. Guardian Idol. In case this gets stripped from our hand and they tap out to do so, then we can fire up the Muta Vault and go punching. You never know. You never know when that when you're gonna need that to happen. Stitcher supplier, okay. Looks like it is not gonna happen. Alright. Start milling them. You started milling them, you gotta start exiling them. Imagine Kadive Concoct. Oh, Search for Oscanta says not today. Okay. All right. End of turn. Scry. Yeah, let's keep that land. Land number five. And we get to play a treasure map also. Feeling pretty good. Thief of Sanity. Well, I think that's where our Swords of Plowshares is going to be met. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and take care of this, this Cloud Conceal on our turn. Treasure map. And, uh... We actually should have played this Secluded Step. Let's just... Can't take care of this deep sanity here. Gonna exile their cloud concealer. And then we have a higher life than our starting life, so we get to draw a card. You love to see it. 
Now I might, maybe I'll maybe we'll cycle this. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll all work out. Our opponent is just going to get locked down by this Relic of Progenitus. I mean, they can play the Scarab God. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5, but that's what they're going to be working with for the most part. That's what they're going to be working with. We can play the, the, the Wandering Emperor on our next turn. Let's go ahead and just cycle this. We coming in? I have no intention with blocking with Mutavolt. I don't. I don't want to turn this into a creature. Absolutely zero intention. You can stop me from gaining a life if you hit me. It's kind of a big deal. All right. They will do so. Okay. Let's scry. Iganjo? Nah, well, we don't want Iganjo. Okay. Yeah, more planes. All right. Here she is. Let us... Let us make a double-striking samurai. Thematic compass? I do actually like thematic compass. I'm gonna keep that one. That draws us, that'll draw us a card, and then it'll turn into a maze of if. Which, in conjunction with our Cosmo Elixir, is going to help keep our life total high, especially if we can manage the graveyard, and they just have a 5-5 five, five Scarab God. Seems pretty solid to me. We've got to make sure we don't have any creatures in our graveyard either, because, you know... We manage theirs, and then we can always target ourselves if they try to target something in our graveyard. Blood on the snow, take care of planeswalkers. Okay. Put it back in our command zone. Okay. Can't return anything. Ooh, we should didn't we? I I didn't activate the uh, relic, which is w worse than it looked, to be honest. Okay. Mindstone. Uh, can I activate this now. One, two, three. So I have one left over. Okay. We'll attack. Could it could not matter, but we got to we got to do it every turn, even if it's not something we care about, because they get to choose. They get to choose what they exile. My opponent is going to be faced with taking four damage, because not a I mean, it's not a small deal. This double strike uh, obviously adds up quite substantially. So we have one, two, three, four left over, which means we can activate this thematic compass to draw a land, and then we can activate this treasure map to scry. And we want to do it in that order. So we don't want to scry and then shuffle shuffle it away. That would kind of be against the point. All right, our opponent is either AFK or is largely unhappy with the state of things. I'm not quite sure which one it is. I guess we'll find out if they take game actions in any amount. So our, our opponent is uh, salting off. You know what? We're gonna continue on, and we're just gonna we're gonna win regardless. We'll keep that up there. Sure. Why not? Just exile their stuff. It's a shame 
because I felt like this this is just, you know, this is the control game. This is the control game that we want to be playing. And our opponent just is unhappy with it. We're not even playing any, like, messed up cards. Like, Relic of Progenitus? Is this what they're upset about because they're playing the Scarab God and we have a Relic of Progenitus? I could have had plenty of cards playing white. I could have had Rest in Peace. You know? Soul Guide Lantern in here. It wasn't a, it wasn't a good it wasn't good odds that they were gonna have have a good time here. So if this is how they want to do it, so be it. Take the win. On the draw against Athreos Shroud Veiled, and we'll keep this. We got some lands. Now we have the Wandering Emperor. We got some ramp. We have a little bit of interaction for their ramp. Or, or a Bank Busty, you know? Or for a Bank Busty. Probably, probably play this Wandering Emperor, though. I don't mind them drawing cards. Okay. Now, Angel of the Dire Hour, this is going to get... Uh, gonna be gone. Right of Oblivion, huh? Okay. Well, looks like we're gonna be wandering, wandering emperoring. They're gonna draw a card. We're gonna get rid of this Day of Judgment. Rid of this old day of judgment. Pass. And we have a surprise. We have a planeswalker too. I hope they don't have a removal spell. That would be that would be tragic. A tragic end to this story. Keep watch for intruders. Oh, they have a removal spell for the samurai. Alright, that's they could have had one for the Wandering Emperor. Let your blade do the talking. You know what? You know what? Let's let's just make let's just make an angel. Let's just make an angel and just see what happens. Yeah, we're gonna get Lauren. Lauren's gonna be gone. What do I have left? They do have a bank busty. Crux of Fate. Okay. Right on. I don't want to lose half our stuff. All right. Remember your training. I really don't want to lose this card, but that's not exactly how the game played out, so. Children of the Apocalypse, huh? <laughs> we all have things what was it? They drew that. They just straight up, just all natural drew that. Oh god, now they get to kill the Wandering Emperor? Oh, this is, this is turned around in a not, a, a not fun way. Yeah. We'll take a draw. We could kill Liliana. We have to kill Liliana? I think we might, actually. Because if we play this, we could make a samurai... And then Liliana would kill it. Temple Silence. And they get to draw another card. I feel like this game has like gotten away from us somehow. But how? I think the sweeper. We kind of went all in on them not having a sweeper, and then they had a sweeper. That happens sometimes. Alright. 
and we all live with our lives. We would have to block. Let's just like let's momentarily get rid of Sheldred. And and I, they don't have many cards in their hand, so maybe like they can do this, but they have to they have to sacrifice a non-land permanent. Maybe they can just do it. Maybe they can just they since they just made two non-land permanents, they can just do that, and I'm terrible. Come on, Justin. What am I thinking? This bank busters bust us up. Lauren was our hope. We really needed to just kill that. I think we should have put more more effort. We lost that. We lost the intervention. Maybe two of our most important cards this game. Could have been. You know? Very well could have been. Now Shealdred's going to be back and it's a whole thing. And we'll draw. Grandmaster of Flowers. Okay. Gosh. This is this is a big this is a thing that's going to happen. Okay. And let's go ahead and play play this Grand Master. And we will say this cannot attack. Or block. Stay your hand. Let's talk. Now this can get crude. Maybe it will. God, she just put so much pressure. Two life is just an uh, insane amount. Athreos, okay. Got a sweet animation. Real creepy. Really creepy. Okay. Coming in. All right. We're going to save the Grand Master. Children now gets a, a thing. Okay. What does this Gideon do? We're going to attack with two or more non-Gideon creatures. Okay. Gideon becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Exile Gideon each creature your opponent's control. It's not as helpful as it might seem. All right. All right, we're going to Ice Shouldered again, which is uh, not a winning strategy. Because leaving Shouldered on the board is not a winning strategy in and of itself. But yet it's what we're doing. Oh, Kaya. Oh, Kaya's so good. Kaya's going to get rid of the Eternal Wanderer. My commander is not Grandmaster of Flowers for a reason. One of these cards is much better than the other one. And it's not the it's not the uh, one that turns into a 7-7 indestructible flying dragon. Believe it or not. Man, this thing 7-7 seven, seven flying indestructible. You just can't it's basically you have, you have to you can exile it, and that's it. Thematic compass? I mean, that's, that's not the worst. Consider the evil within yourself. Consider the evil within yourself, huh? Never thought about that. All right. Coming at Kaya. Yep, throw that block up. Okay. Gideon, the Oath Sworn. Gideon should just have haste. Should just get, should just get haste. 
I know it's a creature, but it's gonna be not a creature. God, what if they kill it right now? They just exile it. Well, it's not indestructible. Just prevent all damage. This is it. This is like a Planeswalker deck Gideon, okay? We're just playing it because we're just playing a bunch of Gideons that become creatures. That's all. This cannot attack or block. We're almost in dragon mode, which is good. We're also almost dead, which is which is bad. Where's lifelink granting Gideon? That's what we need. Give me that lifelink. This Eternal Wanderer costs 10? No! <laughs> March of Wretched Soul. Sorrow. They exile any cards? No? No, just... Just didn't, huh? Okay. Well... Well, hell, man. All right. Gideon, you're up. Not on my watch. Not on your watch, huh? Emiria's call. Don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything crazy, opponent. Just accept it and just say, I was shouldered and that's good enough for pretty much everything. This could just get blocked. This this can't really get blocked. I mean, it can. You make a 1-1 one, one spirit. Okay. We should attack with this too. To kill this Kaya. That probably was smart, right? We can't always be smart. That's a privilege reserved for the smart. Quote that. At this point, we're just holding on. I, th I, think, sh I think this card makes you delirious. You just read it and you're just like... Can't do anything about that. Because, how dare I consider drawing removal? They had judgment hundred years ago. I mean, they have Athrio, so it's not like it's not like I can just like remove it and it's gone. All right, Kaya, you have a decision to make. Okay, it was a pretty quick decision. <laughs> did not did not need to think about that decision for very long. Okay. All right, we're gonna go down to four. Okay. Opponent has very few cards in their hand. Turn that card to the battlefield under your control. Yeah, we'll draw. Draw a card. Ruinous Blast. Can't even play this, nor does it get rid of Shouldred or this. Look at that coin counter. Look at this animation for this coin counter. Beautiful. I'm jealous. All right, let's attack with this angel. All right. Let's go find a planes. Play this. Planes. This is going to flip, but it's still tapped because that's how it works. They gain two. They're going to attack. We got to block with this. Go to, we're going to go to one. Now they have the Eternal Wanderer. Now we lose the game. Yep. Yep. You're not going to return that to the battlefield, are you? You know what we could have done? Could have just had this. Could have just not tapped that. All right. I think it's only fair. 
think it's only fair that we lose. We could have actually went to go try to find a swords to plowshares. And said I just did nothing. <laughs> I think this is the last game. Well, I don't know if it's... um, I don't know if it was Shieldred. Or the fact that it's uh, playing Mono White. Or the fact that this is the second Mono White deck that I've played in the last several days. But uh, my brain was turning to soup there. But I think the good news is... I think this deck is pretty powerful, actually. We even played some cards that, upon reflection, I would probably not have in the deck. I think the Gideons are a little unnecessary. This Gideon Oathsworn, terrible. This card is not good. Uh, it's only like Angel of the Dire Hour. This is just too expensive for what it does. So there's probably at least five slots in this deck that could probably take out those bad cards and add even better cards. And I think just really quite quite solid, actually. Uh, I would want another lifelink creature, like another big lifelink creature to have as the creature that sticks around uh, after you use the minus four ability for the Eternal Wanderer. But other than that, hey, just you, you can ramp hard even in mono white as it turns out. So that's that's what I would want to do is just keep ramping hard with the Eternal Wanderer. Maybe a little bit a little bit more card advantage, but there's not a whole lot left in white to be to be had. So. I don't know, but those are the way. Those are the ways that I would change this deck up. If you have any ideas that I didn't mention or that I didn't, you didn't see here, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Thank you all so so much for getting to the end of the video and your continued support. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any more historic brawl, gladiator, cube, commander, all the best singleton formats in Magic. You can follow me on social media right here as I hit the mic. Uh, with my hand flourish. That way you can see what I'm doing all around. If I'm making content in other places or guesting on someone else's content, you don't miss anything for me. Thank you again so much. I'm Justin Parnell. We'll see you next time.